Hi there, welcome back to the Art of Business English, where we help people like you get the language skills that you need to succeed in any business English environment. Now, a happy new year to everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Art of Business English. It's a pleasure having you here. Uh, I, I know that last week you did not hear from me. I was taking a, a well-earned Christmas break. So uh, yeah, I hope you've all had a great uh, you know, start to the year it is that time of year where we are planning, we're maybe setting our New Year's resolutions. Uh, if you are interested in improving your your planning and maybe setting goals, your goal setting skill set, then uh, head over to the Art of Business English and look at this post as I've got one I'm going to link up. I, th I believe it was episode 56, so way, way back. Uh, back in the early days of the art of business English. Uh, but you can check that out. So it's about how to become a better goal setter and really achieve your out, you know, your objectives and reach your outcomes. Uh, and with that being said, I thought today I would also uh, share some language with you that you can use in meetings or you can use uh, with your teams to discuss or mention, um, you know, uh, goal setting, planning, you know, objectives, targets, etc. Now, if you do hear any laughter and craziness in the background, it's because I've got my family at home, because, you know, a new year and a new uh, quarantine. <laughs> so yeah, we are uh, here in sunny, cold Spain at the moment because it's the middle of winter. Uh, but yeah, we've literally been put back into confinement. So that's wonderful. Uh, great way to start the year. Uh, but not to worry, let's stay positive and let's use this time as a time to learn, improve and, uh, you know, focus on becoming better so that once, you know, the cloud is lifted, we can uh, excel into uh, this, this year. Right. So before I start this episode, I also wanted to quickly let you know that for the last two weeks of this year, I'm going to be launching a new year's sales so head over to the art of business english website and you'll get uh 50 off all of my courses and programs uh just for a two-week period bringing us up to uh february so you can use uh the discount code n y so it's new year n y 2021 okay so i'll put that up NY 2021. So yeah, check it out. Make sure you take advantage. That is the uh, New Year's sale to get you guys uh, focused on your objectives of improving your English so that you can achieve and uh, get whatever you want, maybe get a promotion, uh, improve your language skills so that you're more successful and much more effective and productive at work. All right, so let's start the episode today and I'm gonna head over now and show you guys uh, my list of vocabulary and expressions that you can use for talking about objectives. Right, so this is episode 149 and the first one on my list today is to set a target. Now, we, we use the verb to set and that's what collocates with our target, okay? So, uh, it basically means the practice of giving people targets to achieve and of deciding what these targets should be, okay? So, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, we have set uh, a sales target of 10 sales per day for the first quarter. So, you've set a target. That is your objective, that is your target. You would like to make 10 sales a day uh, for the next three months. Okay, let's look at the next one. Uh, to have a goal. Now, we can use the verb have, okay? You can have a goal. You can also set a goal. Uh, and uh, the meaning of that is the process of deciding what you want to achieve or what you want someone else to achieve uh, over a particular period. So it's really important that we set goals for ourselves. That way we actually have something to work towards. And the good thing about goals is we should make them measurable. Uh, I do discuss this in episode 56 way back. Uh, when we're setting goals, if we make them measurable, then they're much easier to really uh, evaluate if you've actually moved towards them or if, if you're actually on the correct path. So it's really important that they are become uh, measurable goals. and. An example would be, I have a goal this year of reading 52 books. So you can see that that's a measurable goal, which is quite effective. You know, you have got uh, 52 books as your, your 
as, the, as your target, as the goal that you've set for yourself. And if you then reach that 52, then you know, you can, you've met that goal. Whereas if you only read 40, then you haven't quite reached your goal, but you're close. So having a measurable goal is very really effective. And as well, you can, it's easy as well because 52 books means you would like to read one book a week. Okay. So that's also quite, uh, easy to measure. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at the next one to be goal orientated. It's really important in my opinion. I mean, maybe you're not really goal orientated, but goal orientated person or a team works hard to achieve good results in the task that they have been given. So if you're goal orientated, it means that you really are focused on achieving your goals. And I think, you know, personally, I think it's important to work towards goals. It does help give your life a bit of purpose and it does give you the sense that you're moving forward and not just, you know, doing the same thing all the time. Okay, an example is I need to be goal orientated this year if I want to reach my full potential. Okay, so that's like, you know, a bit ambiguous in terms of like reaching your full potential. But if you are goal orientated, that means that you're going to set goals and work towards achieving them. So that's the mindset that you've got for yourself. Okay, the next one on my list is to be outcomes focused. So again, to be outcomes focused basically means to be focused on the result or effect of an action, situation, or event. So, you know, you want to get outcomes. Outcomes are the result of the work that you have set for yourself. Uh, so to be outcomes focused is important as a team. Let me give you an example. We need to be outcome focused focused if we want to move systematically towards our yearly goals. So having this method methodical approach towards, uh, you know, your yearly goals means you have an outcome focused mentality and that will allow you to move towards achieving your goals. Okay. And, and another thing before I continue, I think it's important as well that we take the time to think and plan. And it's very difficult because you know, we get busy. But now is a good time to think, plan, and really reflect on what you've done and where you want to go. Because if you if you give yourself that time and you actually write it down, then you stand a much better chance of actually achieving some objectives as opposed to just getting busy and then really not really focusing on what it is that you should be achieving. Okay, so uh, writing it down, uh, taking the time to focus on and plan on what it is that you want to achieve really will, will pay dividends in the future. Okay, the next on my list is to aim for. So aim for, aim is like, you know, like with a, with a weapon you can aim, you, 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 you point it towards something and that's aiming. So the meaning is to focus on something with the intention of achieving a desired outcome. So if you focus on or aim for something that is like you set it as your objective and then you point your energies towards achieving that. All right. So an example of this would be this year, the company is aiming for new customers in international markets. So that's their aim. They want to break out from maybe from the domestic market and aim for customers in international markets to help the company uh, expand and grow in uh, other areas maybe. Uh, you become a more resilient company if you have international customers because then you're not so dependent on your local market where maybe if there's a recession, then you're going to struggle and suffer. Whereas if you have international customers, then other parts of the world may be not suffering as much as your local market. So yeah, to aim for this is important. Okay. All right. To make one's mission. Now this might sound a bit weird. When we have the ones here, it means my, your, his, her. So we're using this possessive. Uh, so to make one's mission, and this means uh, any work that someone believes it is their duty to do. Okay, so you can make something your mission. Uh, let me give you an example. I will make it my mission to ensure my team is prepared for any unexpected events this year. This is a good sense. This is a good expression to use because it can really link you or tie you strongly to one of your objectives or your aims. Maybe your team, for example, let me give you some context here. Maybe your team was not prepared for the COVID, uh, uh, you know, pandemic last year. 
So you feel that it's your duty and you want to make it your mission to ensure that in 2021, your team is prepared uh, for any unexpected events. So writing these your objectives down in into these types of sentences can really help focus your mind and focus you on achieving those goals. Uh, and it's also nice to, you know, set maybe lofty goals, so high goals, and then uh, try and summarize them into a sentence so that you can cr really keep that, that idea clear in your mind. Okay, so that's a good thing to, to make it your mission to do something or to make it his mission or my mission to do something. All right, so the next one on my list is in order to. Now, in order to is a linking word. It basically, a synonym would be so as to, uh, and it basically means intention or purpose. It's a nice, eloquent or formal way of saying to. So when we want to discuss or mention the purpose behind something, we would say, you know, I want to improve my English to get a better job. So this to get a better job is you're using the infinitive or the infinitive to of the verb in English to express your intention. Whereas we can use in order to, to sound even more formally. So maybe if you put this into uh, some of your uh, company communication or, or some of your departmental reports or uh, maybe uh, the documents that you're you're uh, typing up or creating to, 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 to you know discuss and plan the year out you could use more formal language which would help uh, you know, you know your, your, your English sound a bit more eloquent or, or, or formal so an example would be I'm studying English this year in order to improve my job prospects so my intention is to improve my job prospects. If I speak better English, then I can probably get a better job and also maybe a promotion, okay? And another one, and we're coming to the end of the episode now, uh, is to draw up a plan. To draw up a plan. I mean, you can make a plan, but to draw up a plan sounds lovely. I mean, it's a, it's, uh, basically, to draw something up means to, to you know to write it down on paper, uh, and and you know list out what the, the the points of this plan will be. So to draw up a plan is a, a more eloquent or much more advanced way of saying to make a plan. Okay, so it basically means to outline the objective to reach a desired goal. So when you draw up a plan, you are outlining or listing the objectives that you need to achieve in order to reach your desired goal. And I'll give you an example. We should draw up a plan before committing to anything big this year. Okay, so before you decide on these big, you know, lofty ideas, maybe it's better to draw up a, a plan and have all of your objectives listed clearly so that, uh, you know, you, do, you don't try to overcommit yourself and therefore you know in the in the in your attempts at trying to achieve a lot you actually achieve nothing which is very common as well okay and i think this is my the last one on my list here today uh to state one's intentions again this one's is my your his her so we're using the possessive here so to state one's intentions uh, and this basically means to clearly say what you plan to do okay very important when you're setting goals or objectives for the year. So an example would be, I have stated my intentions for this year. I'm giving up smoking. So you've clearly stated your intention, which is to give up smoking. So I'm giving up smoking, which means you're going to stop smoking because you know it's bad for you. Uh, and, oh, sorry, no, I've actually got one more. Uh, that is to fulfill one's aspirations. So to fulfill means to um, complete or make a reality and your aspirations are the things that you desire okay so again let's have a look uh, meaning to achieve a goal or objective that is strongly desired okay your aspirations are like you know quite strong desires I want to give you an example as manager of this team this year we should aim to fulfill the company's aspirations of becoming the biggest name in our sector so you can see the company has this big goal, this big, strong desire to become the most well-known or the biggest name company in the sector that they're working in. Okay, so that is how we can use these types of expressions uh, when we are going about planning and uh, setting goals for the year. 
uh, maybe even in our personal lives, we can use them for our like you know New Year's resolutions. Even though some people don't believe in New Year's resolutions, it's still a good idea to plan things out and have a think about what you it is that you want to achieve for the year. Okay, well that's really it then. That brings me to the end of episode 149, which is the first episode of this new year, uh, January 2021. And we haven't started that well, unfortunately, because we're back in quarantine. But you know, let's be positive. Uh, things can only get better. <laughs> That's as I say. And remember, check out uh, this episode and many more over the Art of uh, Business English. I've got the link in the final thoughts section of this post on how to goal set for the new year, which is one of my past uh, episodes, which I'm sure you'll benefit from as well. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have had a great Christmas and it's been a good start to the year. And don't forget, starting very soon at the Art of Business English with the discount code NY2021, you can get 50% off all my courses and programs. So that's it for me, people. Take care and I'll see you all next week on the Art of Business English. And I do believe next week I will, if we're lucky, Loic will be dropping in to tell us about what he's been up to lately. He's been a very busy man. So stay tuned. And I've also got another one in the pipeline for one of my YouTube listeners or audience members who uh, asked me a question and I'm going to uh, deal with that in the next coming weeks. So stay tuned for many more free episodes of The Art of Business English. That's it from me, people. Take care. Bye for now.